Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollars, the four-hour chart on Coinbase. And Bitcoin, guys, I am really surprised. I'll be honest with you. I thought there we'd have a larger move by now. We have not had that. Um, and we've had Bitcoin continuing just to bounce right on top of this $3,400 support, at least on Coinbase. As I always say, it'll vary depending on your exchange. Um, but this has been one hell of a uh, support area right here, guys. It's really been impressive, I must say. Um, now, if we look at this um, from a, um, if we pull our Fibonacci out and we just kind of, um, excuse me, we kind of get into uh, um, the uh, why this is such a strong support. Obviously, um, obviously, this was a support that we've had uh, zoned out for quite some time. We can see that it acted as support back here quite a few times. Um, you know, support, 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 finally broke through, acted as resistance, and then uh, resistance, 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 and then it broke up above that resistance. Price came back down, support, support, support. Um, so we knew this area was going to be a support. In fact, if we go all the way back here to that, uh, uh, actually, I'll pull out to the daily so you guys can see a little bit better. Uh, but you can see going all the way back to August of 2017, this was a very strong support area. Price broke up, acted as resistance here, finally broke above the resistance, came back down, support, support, came back up, came back down, support, 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 and then just took off. Um, so we knew this area between 3400 3250 was going to be a fairly strong support, guys. Um, but it's not just because of what we could see as far as uh, um, uh, price creating some structure in the past in this area. We also, if we look at this overall structure, this larger structure, when we go swing low, swing high, get right on top of it there. We can see that we're literally bouncing right on top. We bounced here, guys. We bounced right on top of the golden pocket between the 618 and the 65 fib level. Um, so we knew that was going to be a support. Finally, that ended up breaking down. And where did it hit? Hit right at our next fib level, which was at the uh, 786. And it's just been bouncing. You can see how the 786 coincides nicely with right around 3400, really right around 3380-ish, somewhere thereabouts. But it's bouncing literally right on top of that 786 fib level. Um, now, <clears throat> Excuse me, and we can see that this zone that we've had marked off for quite some time, well before we created this low here, this zone that we had marked off between 3400 and 3250 coincides perfectly with that 786 fib. And then if that 786 breaks down, what's the next fib level? We've got the uh, the 8865 fib level right below here, which coincides perfectly with the 3250 um, uh, support area. On, again, at least on Coinbase, it'll be it'll, the the price will actually vary depending on your exchange, obviously, guys. But this the the pattern should all be the same. Um, so of course we're going to be watching this area between 3,400 and 3,250 very very closely. Um, I've pointed out this falling wedge type pattern here, this possible falling wedge type pattern here, guys, um, which is a bullish pattern. Um, if this ends up being validated, uh, I, again, it's a little bit sloppy. So I'm 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 as I as I've said before many times, just kind of take this with a grain of salt. Overall. We know that the the overall pattern is bearish and has been for a whole lot of time for a very long time, guys. So you know uh, it'd be kind of swimming upstream um, to to break that pattern. That being said, patterns do end up breaking eventually. Um, but for now, we'll have to wait and see what happens. If this thing is validated, in other words, if this falling wedge is a valid falling wedge, what I believe will probably happen um, is because we, as of right now, we're getting uh, we've got very low volume. We're still sitting at about uh, 5.3 billion on the day. That's a a little bit of it. I, oh, let me look at it before I talk here, guys. I believe. Uh, let's see the last couple days. Yeah, we've been at uh, we were at 5.8, 5.4, 5,000, 5,000. So a little bit uptick uh, for today. Not much. Overall volume remains very, very flat, guys. Volume remains very weak. And we know in weak volume, what does that mean? Weak volume is uh, means that this is this market is very, very ripe for manipulation. Um, the weaker the volume, the easier it is for the market to manipulate. And so market makers are looking to manipulate the market. The question is, you know, where are they going to drive price? They're going to drive price up. They're going to drive price down. And as I always tell you, you come over here and you look at longs versus shorts, guys. Um, typically, you want to see who's outpacing who. Longs right now are certain certainly outpacing shorts, even though the longs have been falling off the board here since, let's see, since about February, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, let's see, falling off the board here since about, yeah, February 2nd. Um, they've been kind of falling off the board, looking at shorts. Shorts have also been dropping um, since about the same time, really uh, January 1st, or excuse me, January 31st to February 1st. Um, longs have really been dropping off the board, but shorts are still outpacing, or excuse me, excuse me, longs are still outpacing shorts, which means that market makers may have some incentive to, to liquidate longs. And how do you liquidate long positions? You do that by driving price down. Um, so if we look at this, guys, we look at this as a falling wedge pattern. If market makers are going to drive price down, how does that jive with this possible falling wedge pattern? 
and what I'm looking at, guys, and what I think um, a, a more likely scenario is, is price is good. We can see the price has just been bouncing off the top of this descending support line, the top, or excuse me, resistance line, the top of this falling wedge um, for quite some time. It's been bouncing off the top of this falling wedge since February 2nd. So for the last three days, um, price has been uh, just been kind of um, trying to break up above and really unable to break up above this. So I wouldn't be surprised. Um, again, doesn't mean this is going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised to see price bounce off the top of this again, come back down test the bottom of this wedge, possibly the bottom of this zone here, right around 3,300, 3,250, 3,260, somewhere in that area, guys. Price to come back down, hit off that bottom of our um, that 88.65 Fib level that I just showed you, which would coincide nicely with the bottom of this um, support area. Hit that zone, and then possibly just kind of have a nice explosion right up to validate this falling wedge pattern. If that does happen, I'm going to be looking for excuse me, I'm going to be looking to buy between, uh, I'll probably stack buy orders between 30, uh, 3350 and 3250 with a very tight stop at about 3200 just to allow for kind of a wick. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, stacking in buy orders there, not saying it's going to come down there, but if it does, getting your buy orders triggered there and where would I where would I target? I would probably, if you want to be very, very conservative guys, I would target this zone right here between about 30, uh, let's see, 3460 um, and 3450, somewhere in this area, guys, that would be a rather conservative target. If you want to be a little bit more um, uh, risky, I would target this zone right here. And this area is going to be, in my opinion, this area is going to be a very, very strong resistance, guys. This was that 786 Fib level that acted as support for so long. Um, it's very likely going to act as a very strong resistance. So what I would do if you do end up buying down here, again, stack your buy orders between 3350 and 3250 with a tight stop at 3200, knowing if that does break down, we could quickly fall down into 3000. Um, and I, I would initially target this area right here at about 34, uh, 3400 to 3450. I would take your investment off the board at this point. Um, possibly just go ahead and get out at this point if you really want to be conservative, but at least take your investment off the board and then let your profits ride up here to about 3,500 to 3,550 and get out of the trade. I'd get in and I'd get out. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to bounce right here, guys. It may continue up, but why risk it, guys? You want to protect your capital um, and you don't want to get greedy. And right now, guys, the overall trend is bearish without question. Um, so you don't want to buck the trend until the trend has been broken. And obviously right now it hasn't. Now, zooming out on the daily, guys, it does to me, one of the reasons that I'm, I'm starting to watch this and starting to think that this trade may, uh, this happen, this is a, um, or excuse me, this this entry point is not a bad idea. Um, looking at the overall pattern, this entry point down here between 3350 uh, and 3250 um, is looking at the overall pattern, guys, we can see, I'll just kind of draw it out for you. Um, yeah, looking at the overall pattern, guys, uh, we can see that Bitcoin's been kind of following this pattern here. Just dropping, coming up, dropping a little bit less, 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 coming up, and then dropping a little bit less coming up here. And we're getting to that point, kind of like that Russian doll where it keeps getting smaller and smaller, but the pat but the but the doll is the same pattern. You know, we're, we're seeing to where it may drop again here, hit this point, and where are we at? If this is in fact that falling wedge pattern, it could drop down. And then when it comes up, just kind of explode here. Um, and that, well, that was a little bit uh, that was a little bit dramatic. Mostly, um, in my opinion, probably just going to hit the top right here. When I say explode, come, definitely come out here. And it's certainly possible that we get some kind of major explosion like this, guys. But I don't think it's probable, at least not yet. Especially given the fact that we've had we have such little volume right now in the market. But it is certainly possible that we come up and have a very nice trade opportunity to buy low around thirty three hundred, give or take fifty dollars, as I said, and sell at a relatively higher price somewhere between if you want to be conservative 30 3400 3450 uh, if you want to be a little bit more uh, liberal with it and uh, and uh, and take a little bit uh, higher risk you could sell somewhere around 3550 3600 even um, but uh, either way it does look like there's a good chance that it could take off here now there is also getting rid of this there is also that chance that price comes down and this thing just collapses as I said longs are stacked 
um, and shorts are falling off. Um, and, or excuse me, longs are falling. Both of the shorts and longs are falling off, guys, but longs are certainly stacked higher than shorts. There's no question about it. Um, so, you know, we, we might see price coming back down further. In fact, if we go over there and we look at that larger picture, as I've showed you guys many, many times before, all the way out on the, uh, on the weekly chart, in fact, I'll go ahead and just bring it up now, guys, so you can see uh, exactly what I'm talking about. But looking at the weekly chart, guys, I've showed you guys this many, many times. Um, we can see that there is a very good chance. Well, sorry about that, guys. I didn't mean to get that uh, drawing tool in there. Now we get rid of that. Um, we can see that there's a very good chance when price broke down off of that 3600 that we were going to come back down and retest this low. There's just not a whole lot of support. It kind of gives you a lot better perspective on the weekly chart. There's just not a lot of support here. And we could come back down and create this double bottom pattern um, somewhere around uh, the bottom of which would be about 3140 on Coinbase. Again, it would vary on your exchange. But somewhere around this prior low that was created back um, back in uh, December, um, come back, test that low, and then, have a, and then uh, uh, bounce double bottom and then kind of uh, um, at that point reverse course coming back up that if that does break down though guys um, and again if the volume remains so low like this there's a good chance it will we could very very quickly find ourselves somewhere around 3,000 even 2,500 you can see there's just not a lot of support over here until we get down to that 3,000 2,500 dollar range um, so we could very quickly find ourselves down here so I don't want to I don't want to act like this is a very this uh, this trade that I'm, I'm discussing is something that is a sure thing because it is absolutely Absolutely 100% not a sure thing. Nothing in crypto is, especially right now, and you would certainly be bucking the trend. That being said, you know, it, it is not, it, it certainly, um, it, it certainly would make sense if you're going to enter a trade to do it there and just make sure you have your stop loss in place. Make sure you're not getting greedy. <clears throat> Zooming in on the four-hour RSI, guys, we can also see that the, the the RSI seems to be getting squeezed a little bit as well. In other words, we're creating a series of lower highs. We can see that's true right here. This little exception right here, but for the most part, not really an exception, but this little uh, uh, bucking of the trend line here. But for the most part, this kind of descending resistance line here, a uh, series of lower highs. And if we come over here and we look at the bottom here, we can see that we've also created a series of higher lows for the most part. Again, a little bit sloppy, but for the most part, creating a series of higher lows here, guys. So in other words, um, what are we seeing? In other words, we're seeing a, a we're seeing the uh, the four hour RSI getting squeezed tighter and tighter and tighter um, without question. Um, so that being said, guys, again, that does suggest a possible larger move to come. So I'm going to be watching this descending resistance line, this ascending support line, see if one of the two gets broken, and certainly that'll get my attention if it does. Coming over here, and we're look, looking at the uh, uh, moving averages and exponential moving averages. This is on the four-hour chart. What else are we seeing? We're seeing, um, as I always tell you guys, um, we're, we're, anytime you see the uh, 821 and 55-day EMA all converging on each other, as well as the 50-day moving average, which we're seeing here. We're seeing them getting squeezed tighter and tighter. We're also seeing the Bollinger Bands start to bottleneck tighter and tighter. That also suggests a larger move to come. And I've been surprised that it's taken this long, guys, but make no mistake about it. Anytime you see something like this, it's only a matter of time, typically, before that larger move does come. And, and obviously, or excuse me, and, and also typically, we also see a drop off in volume typically before you get that larger move come. And we've had kind of this in the last couple of weeks, this kind of dropping off in volume as we get the, the moving averages and exponential moving average all getting squeezed tighter and tighter in the bot in the uh, Bollinger Bands bottleneck and if we come over here and we look at the daily chart what are we seeing we're seeing also Bollinger Bands starting to bottleneck came out just a little bit here for the but for the most part Bollinger Bands are bottlenecking um, we're also seeing we're unable to break up above that eight day EMA um, just getting st um, um, getting uh, that's uh, providing a very very strong resistance um, and has been for quite some time um, so again moving basically just kind of moving sideways slightly down but basically just kind of moving sideways unable to really do anything kind of stagnant um, and again that only lasts so long guys before typically you get a larger move coming. Um, so I do believe that we are going to have that large move. The question is, is that move going to be up? Is that move going to be down? Um, and, you know, I wish I could, uh, I, I can honestly make a very good case in either direction. Um, in fact, it, just looking at the chart, as I said, guys, to me, um, what I'm going to be doing, and as, as I said, guys, just to reiterate, I'm going to be, I'm going to be entering in that trade um, somewhere between a uh, laddering in my buys, somewhere between 3550 um, and 3250, very tight stop at 3200. And I'm going to be targeting um, the initial 
between 3450, uh, 3400 and 3450. I'm going to take my uh, investment off the table at that point, and I might, depending on volume, depending on how impulsive that looks, I might let let the rest ride, or I might just completely get out of the trade, depending on how things look at that point in time. Also referencing longs versus shorts, um, but I will very likely be be taking this trade, um, assuming that uh, it does play out the way that I'm hoping. In fact, I've already got my buy stacked uh, between there. Not a large position. I'm not going to get greedy. I mean, this is money that I can certainly afford to lose. And if you are going to take this trade, I would very highly recommend you only do it with money that you can afford to lose. Guys, do not go in heavy here at all, um, because as I said, you are bucking the trend here. Um, but I do believe that this is a uh, a logical um, a logical trade to take if you are looking uh, to enter a trade at this point. And if you're not, and if you're not sure, and if you're uncomfortable, by all means, sit on the sidelines, guys. There will certainly be more opportunities once this thing turns around. And I do believe that the uh, the market is going to eventually turn around. We may have a little more pain in the short term, but I do believe that the market will eventually uh, turn around probably by the end of 2019, if not before. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, would appreciate an upload if you have enjoyed this content. Until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.